Hi, I'm Charlie Van Dongen. I'm the CTO for Involve Audio. I'm here today to show you the setup for our Involve Audio surround sound system. When you receive our product from Involve Audio, you'll receive a whole bunch of stuff that you see before you right now. You'll receive our amplifier module, IEC power cable. That's an Australian version, not the American one you'll have. You'll receive two woofers two speaker cables, both of different length. You receive four of these without the stands. This, these stands are just here today uh, to help demonstrate what we're doing. And you'll receive four cables of um, to connect to your amplifier, plus two extension cables. And now a quick guided tour of the actual amplifier box itself. Uh, it's been designed to be very, very simple that even I can understand. Uh, we'll have in the front here a basic on-off button and we just push that to turn on in a minute. We have our volume control which is a multi-function control. It functions as a volume and a mode adjust where you can set uh, whether it's uh, CD, DVD or HDMI or Bluetooth. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And also in the front we've got, I'm just looking over, our surround sound mode where we can do stereo we can do sweet spot stereo, which I'll describe a bit later, or we can do surround sound by a simple click. Next adjustment is our subwoofer level. So we can adjust how loud the subwoofers are. That's a personal taste thing to blend them for your room. And the last button over here is your surround level to determine uh, what uh, loudness suits your room and your taste for the surround sound channels. And now I'll turn the system on and we're just going to push the button down and you'll see flashing on the display here the word involve six times. It takes a few seconds and when that's done it enables you to get into it and there we are. We've got uh, what says input uh, which is at the moment set to CD and volume. You can change the volume very simply by turning this knob up and down and as you can see I'm turning it downwards to minus 25 dB going the other way to 0 dB and to plus uh, to a boost level typically speaking leave that set probably around minus 10 would be a good start and see where you are the next um, adjustment is uh, by pushing this button in and out you can change your source currently it's on CD we click it once, it goes to DVD, click it again, HDMI, and if you want to change, we've got three HDMI inputs, you just push the HDMI button once, that's going to number two, or number three, or back to number one, there we go. Um, and so if we want to, get, the next one is Bluetooth, and that's a standard Bluetooth connect, and we push it again, it goes back to where we started from it. There's also a remote control which I'm holding in my hand right now and on that you can turn the unit off or you can adjust the volumes up and down or you can vary the bass and the treble adjustments. And we've now ro rotated the unit around to look what's on the back panel. First thing you'll notice is that uh, we're very simple. If you go to the back of a standard AV receiver these days uh, you need a PhD in uh, nuclear brain surgery to uh, cope with it. Well this one's a lot simpler as you can see. We have very simple groups. These are your two RCA inputs. First one is uh, CD in or DVD in, left and right. We have uh, we have line out. So if you want to output, use this as a preamp and output that to some other um, amplifier you may have. You can take the outputs out of there. Or if you want to go to an active subwoofer, not using our subwoofers, you can have a subwoofer output. Moving right along, we have three HDMI inputs, HDMI 1, 2 and 3, which you can connect to your TVs or CD players or DVD players and uh, as normal. And we have a HDMI output which goes to your TV. Um, we have um, our subwoofer uh, setting here. And there's three modes of subwoofer setting. We can have dual mono, 
we can have front subwoofers where you locate both subwoofers up the front or a front and rear. Um, a good setting to start with, we think, is that you have a front subwoofer and a rear subwoofer. Um, but you may have personal taste on that. Next two buttons, a little bit scary, which we'll talk about later. Uh, they are the um, delay equalization adjustments. Uh, it's a whole different topic, which I'll go to shortly. It does come factory preset to a setting which we think is suitable for most people, but you can individually tailor it later. So again, don't be scared of that one. Standard IEC input for mains power, which uh, will have, um, you have supplied American ones. And down here we have two subwoofer outputs. Uh, as we'll discuss, they'll either be, as you can see the labels, like either front, front rear, left right or dual mono. And we have these funny looking connectors which connect to your speakers. Um, and we have in the front, uh, this is front right, we have rear right, front left and rear left. This is our front right speaker. It'll be labeled when you receive it from us and it's connected to a length of wire here and the shorter ones, the rear ones, are, uh, also come with um, extension cables. Uh, and that's our connector. So the front right goes to the front right connector here and just plugs in, you'll hear a click and it's in and it's quite strong. To release it, by the way, you push a little tab here and pull out. So you can see a little tab and I'll put it back in. This is the front left speaker connection. Again, that's the front left speaker. It'll be labeled and it will plug over here. Same process and then so on for the rear ones. This is one of your two subwoofers. As you can see, it's fairly compact. It can be left and right, uh, front and back or dual mono, however you want it. And now to connect it, we rotate this around so you can see. And now for the connections. Uh, you look at your supplied wire here, and if you look really closely at your supplied wire, one side will have a white stripe on it. You, you might have to really focus in on that, and the other side doesn't. Most important thing is to be consistent. Uh, my own personal things, I usually have the stripe associated with the positive. You might be different and associate with a negative, but just remember your own personal preference on that, whatever tags your mind. Now, we're going to connect this in my case, because I always associate it with the positive, to the positive input of the connector. Excuse my blocking your picture at the moment. And you whack it into the hole in the middle and screw it nice and tight. And then you connect in my case, the non-white stripe one to the black terminal. And screw it on tight. When we go to connect this to the amplifier, we maintain the color convention. The white stripe unit, which is this one in my case, is gonna to go to the red side of the amplifier output. In this instance, I'm going to do a front and rear woofer installation. And so the important thing to do is to identify which connector is which. Over here, if you look at this, it says mono, left, front. So in this instance, I want to go as it's a front. Um, and so I'm going to find and locate the white stripe again, which is this one. I can see it. And in my instance, because I associate that with the red, I'm going to put it in. I push the tab and, sh and put it in the hole. Likewise, the negative. I push the tab and push that in the hole. It's as simple as that. For the rear speaker, the same procedure. Identify the white stripe. In my instance, I'm putting that into red. And then the non-stripe one goes into the black. But maintain the consistency. And that's, that's all on that one. Today we're going to do a front and rear woofer installation. And you go to your front panel and you've got a choice of three modes in the back here. You've got dual mono, left and right woofer, and the last one over the other end, as you can see, is a front rear installation. So I'm going to go to the front rear installation with two little clicks of the switch. And we're done. 
These last two small knobs are concerned with the setting up of the delay time equalization for the room so that you can sit anywhere within the room and have a stable stereo image. There are two settings, they come factory preset. Uh, please leave them where they are until you read the instruction manual. If you want to adjust it for your room, um, there is a procedure clearly written in there. Please refer to that. And now we're going to talk about how to set the speakers up and position them within the room. As you can see, we've got a frontal setup at the moment. We've got a front right speaker and a front left. And uh, when you're discussing this, you always have to imagine yourself in the seated position. So it's, it may well be on my left, but it's on your right. So that's the front right, and it is plugged into the front right of the amplifier at the rear. As you can see, we have these two very unusually shaped speakers and uh, we have two panels and they're being driven differently. They're not getting the same signals. And so it's important to uh, have these oriented correctly within the room. It's actually a very simple procedure. They are labelled as we discussed before. This speaker normally comes with labelled as, uh, as front left. Continue. Um, the issue comes down to how to position these within the room. Um, and as you can see, we have a Perspex panel up the front and the, that's to uh, enhance the separation, the audio separation between the left and right panels from where you're sitting. Um, I can go into that one a little bit later. Um, but as you can see, when you look down the speaker like that, you have a smaller angle here and a wider angle. The wider angle always um, points outwards towards the wall. The smaller angle is always pointing inwards towards the wall. Or from the listener's perspective, another easy way to track it is to just make sure also that you're just seeing the edge of this um, separator. Another clue is to always have this, the wider angle unit there, 90 degrees to the wall. Not like that at 45 degrees, not like that, but 90 degrees to the wall. Here on the right hand unit, it's really a mirror image of what we did on the other side. Again, if you have a look at it, there's a larger angle here and a smaller angle here. That smaller angle is facing towards the inside, the larger angle faces towards the wall. I'm going to orient this panel 90 degrees to the wall. And that's a basic setup there. For the rear panels, it's the same procedure where you identify the left and right panels to be labeled and ensure that the wider angles is facing towards the wall. Um, by doing this procedure, we're trying to set up uh, time delay zones um, that are properly aligned to your various listening positions. If you get it right, you can sit anywhere in the room and you won't need a subwoofer. Uh, you'll have a, a stable central image and no subwoofer. Generally speaking for most rooms, it's better to place the two frontal speakers, left and right, on the narrow edge of a room or narrow side of a room. So if you have a rectangular shaped room, uh, try, if you can, to put the fronts up the narrower sides of the, of the, of the rectangle.